What's up everybody, I'm Evil Rabbit and welcome back to the channel here on a set of Corsa. The other day I was in the lobby with one of the local drift guys in my local drift scene and we were just uh, having a little fun on Drift Playground in some Tano Buddies S14s. Now before I get ripped in the comment section about the Tano Buddy cars, a lot of people are like, oh the Tano Buddy cars are so easy to drift, oh they're not as hard as some competition cars. The Tano Buddies cars are very easily slidable and they are very well handleable. So a lot of people drive them, it's in a lot of the lobby, so why not get used to driving these cars and have fun in the cars that most lobbies are filled with. So we're here today going to talk about these two S14s on Drift Playground and how like proper most of these tandems were between the two of us. So like I said, I recorded this the other day, so we're going to give a little like overview and talk about it here while we watch it like live basically here on the channel I'm watching it for the first time watching the playback while you know commentating for you guys so something a little bit different for today a little bit of a door tap there so like I said we were just basically throwing lap after lap of constant tandems here on Drift Playground and you can see he's sucking up to my door a lot of the times and a lot of people uh, have a problem being able to stay close to a door and that's because of not, you know, understanding, you know, left foot braking or clutch kicking and stuff like that and using too much e-brake or basically being on too much throttle. I notice that a lot when I go into online sessions that people tend to hit me a lot. I tend to get bounced around a lot and stuff like that. But when you're with a group of people that you can trust, like my, my team, you know, usual suspects or, you know, these local guys that I'm starting to drift with as well that, you know, I've seen in actual drift events with their real cars, you know, they know what's going on and they know how to throw doors they kind of get used to your line and right there he's he knows my line he kind of knows what i'm going to be doing how i'm going to be transitioning and he can work that way so you got to find yourself somebody that you can trust to throw a lead so he knows that i usually do a certain line so he can kind of get a little bit more aggressive in the chase position and you know it's very good to find a good lead because in order to have a good chase you got to have a good lead and if you have a nice flowy lead driver you can definitely get serious doors so proper tandems here at drift playground are definitely a thing so make sure you guys follow me on instagram and twitter all of it is down in the description box below got some big things coming here in 2020 with these local drift guys and everything gonna be uh bringing out some stuff for you guys to play with so right there I kind of flicked a little bit too hard and I kind of angle stalled it out and he kind of had to back up a little bit but then he's able to suck back on my door give me a little love tap on the door which no big deal because I can handle a little bit of a tap and he's just right there he's kind of pointing right at my quarter right at my door his, his wheels right at the back part of my door which is kind of where you want to be when you're uh, trying to suck up and chase you don't want to be too far inside you don't want to be too far back but he has enough room to transition and transition smoothly so advantage of us having both the same cars it was a lot easier for us to modulate our throttles because the cars were in the same power band so if you're in a lobby with somebody who has a lot more horsepower you're gonna have to be doing cutting angles doing less than shallow angles to keep on their door but when you're on cars that are basically similar power it's super easy to throw amazing tandems so that's why a lot of people like these tandem buddy cars because most of them are at the same power band which, you know, I have a lot of fun throwing these cars around. They're they're very well handling. They're very, they feel very nice on a wheel. They can feel floaty at times when you throw them on comp tires and stuff like that. They're very grippy and very good. So, I believe we switch it up here very soon, and I go into the chase position. I think I can't remember how many laps we were back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, just driving and driving, throwing doors. I know I switch it up. And I go in the chase position and I chase him down for a while. We just, we do this with very minimal mess ups. And, uh, you know, it was it was amazing to be able to just throw that many laps, you know, consecutively after lap after lap with him. And, you know, be able to not mess up. Now, there's a couple times when I'm in the chase, I know I do screw up. I come a little bit out of whack. I come a little bit unwound. And I kind of go off track. But nothing, I'm able to suck right back up on this door right in the next turn. So, if you watch, you know, my hand movement, I use a lot of handbrake for initiating these cars just to get the snap rotate a little bit. You know, I could be using a lot less handbrake and using a little bit more left foot braking or weight transfer. You know, it's just a personal style that I've 
grown to use and I'm trying to not use handbrake as much because it's a crutch and I don't want to use it as much we almost uh almost biffed there and I believe this is where I uh yeah I flashed him to go around me and we switched it up and I tried to go in the chase position and if you watch my you know my pedal movement there's a lot of movement going on on those pedals a lot of left foot brakes a lot of clutch kicks basically torturing that clutch and we probably would have been out of tires my clutch probably would have smoked by the end of these runs because these this was probably a good solid 20 25 minutes of just pure tandems so this is something different than if you guys like this style of where I just do some driving with some friends or the team and then I come back watch it and kind of give you a play-by-play -play and talk about it you know here on the channel something a little bit different I know it's not that initial like pow you know the giddiness of when I'm throwing massive doors and how I change but it's a little bit of a different style talking about you know the perfect tandems here trying to get tandems and the consistency of tandems now was he better chase driver than I was I would say he was a little more consistent in the chase than I was for sure his leads were consistent as well I'm definitely getting there my leads and chase are becoming more and more pronounced and more and more better with the you know seat time that I'm getting you know, doing the Bushido series drift championship and stuff like that is definitely helping and right there almost perfect transition right on his door kind of pointing a little bit further forward than I wanted to be so you can tell if you watch this brake light, he uses a lot of left foot brake to uh, kind of transition the car right there. And then a little quick tap of the brake to make sure he wasn't going to overshoot that. And right there he's on brake. He uses a lot of left foot braking driving. So it's a different style driving than me. So I was able to adapt though and, you know, get to where I needed to be. So I wasn't running over him and I was just solid, you know, rev basically rev banging. If you're watching, you know, the dashboard behind my fan attack most of the time it's a uh, flash and red in second gear and we stay in second gear because of the gear ratio we had and the tires we had set up I think it was on 245s I kind of cut that one a little bit short to try and catch up and then a quick you know transition back trying to flow his line and then suck up to his door and like I said feet movement is there's a lot of it it's it's crazy for me to look back when I'm doing this stuff because it's just second nature to me from when I'm doing it when I'm driving in the game or driving in real life it's second nature for what my feet are doing left foot braking clutching handbrake and I don't actually pay attention to it so when I look back and watch these videos and watch how much like movement I actually have on my pedals how much movement the wheels actually doing you know it's crazy for me to see because I'm not even thinking about doing it but I am noticing as I'm watching this if you guys have been around the channel for a very long time you guys have known how unsmooth my steering used to be and if you notice right now, if you're watching my hand movements, there's not much wavering, not much twitching. Nine times out of ten, I'm letting go of the wheel, and it's kind of throwing itself back in the counter steer. Like, right there, just a little bit of help, kind of throwing it back, but I pretty, yeah, I basically let go of the wheel, kind of float it a little bit, and then just let it go, and it spins into position. So, getting a lot more smoother on my steering, and a lot more smoother on my throttle control and stuff like that, so my tandems are getting a lot better. It helps having a good team behind me with the usual suspects and all the support they have with t you know helping me get you know tandems helping me with the Bushido series and as well as my you know real life friends that I know in personally in real life that are actual drifters as well and the new local boys that I'm getting to know that you know are going to be helping increase better now I need to get back into a real car that is something that is happening very soon hopefully I did used to have an S14, so if you guys have been on the channel for a while, you guys know I used to talk about it. I did have an S14, and I did uh, drift you know, in real life for a while, and it kind of got wrecked. DB did a tire, wrecked the car. So, looking to get a new chassis, hopefully unsure of what it's going to be. It's either going to be an S chassis or maybe a Z. But, that's what we are going to do hopefully here coming springtime is going to be bringing some other real life drift content to the channel whether it be going to local events hanging out with the local guys you know ride alongs and you know videos and montages and stuff at you know actual IRL drift events talking about you know real drift cars and doing basically you know drift car breakdowns and stuff like that they're over through that turn massively as well as the gaming content but it's not going to strive from what my channel is you know going back to the basics of when I used to do Forza Horizon 3 which was 
a lot of like Game of Drifts and stuff with friends. Something I want to bring back, but I might bring it back here on a set of Corsa. The Game of Drift was a lot of fun. We can do it a lot more interesting here in a set of Corsa with the ability to have these modified tracks where we can do certain lines instead of um, you know point zones. We could do clipping zones. We could also do hard parts. I kind of bumped him a little bit much there. That would have rode off his car too. So like I said, we had a few mishaps and a few accidents, but all in all, it was a very, very solid, basically tandem time. And there was just two of us on the track. We did just bang doors back and forth. It was definitely a lot of fun, you know. And then later in the evening, we uh, kind of got some crazy uh, four-door tandems, and we were stacked four deep through um, Tomato Circuit, which hopefully I still have the footage. My computer kind of had a blip, and the replays didn't save fully, so I have some of them. So we're gonna bring in some of those four car stacks and stuff like that here to the channel as well or I'm just gonna get some more these guys are very consistent they're very you know very cool guys so it's great to you know have a couple groups of very good drifters that I can throw tandems with and throw doors with so like I said there's some big things coming to the channel here in 2020 not only with the fact of the VR and the PC rig and the set of course are breaking into this you know there's some big things that I'm also working on myself that could be um, an opportunity for you guys as well as subscribers to the channel to uh, get a little bit more involved with the channel. So, going to be wanting to do more live streams on Torque Drift again. Going to be wanting to do live streams on a set of Corsa. Going to be wanting to get back into Horizon 3 live streams and stuff like that as well as open lobbies and stuff. I do have my set of Corsa lobby up and running. It is up when I am actually running so if you search EVL Rabbit you can usually find it when it's up. I'm going to start posting when it's up. If you guys want to come in and throw tandems, throw doors, usually we'll use public cars. If you see cars that you don't have, I will, you know, hopefully be setting up a Google Drive for those cars so that you guys can go to the drive, set and get those cars in and basically have the server cars. So, a little bit different of a video here for today. Basically talking about tandems and kind of just showing you guys you know how to just go lap after lap after lap of just tandems and have a lot of fun with it. a little bit of a wall tap nothing major so something different for you guys today hope you guys enjoyed it make sure you guys follow me on social media and as always I thank you guys for watching hot Meeple rabbit i'll see you guys on the track